A young, inexperienced hunter finds himself left behind by his pack, believing that he died in an accident. After finding an unexpected companion in a wild beast, will he be able to make it back home safely despite the treacherous roads he has to face? Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we'll recap and review an American prehistorical adventure film, Alpha. Let's check it out. In prehistoric Europe, about 20,000 years ago, a group of hunter-gatherers is crawling in the fields as they are about to ambush a herd of bison. Their chief, Tao, takes one look at his only son, Kida, to make sure that he is ready for his first ever hunt. Kida nods to him, which affirms his decision to attack. The group now charges towards their target, which triggers the animals to go into defensive mode and charge toward them. Once they're close enough, they throw their spears and the herd of bison swerves and now heading towards the cliff. Most of the bison fell off the cliff, leaving only three behind who are now charging again toward the group. One of the bison has its eyes on Kida and hits him with its horns. It wasn't enough for the animal as it also drags him to the cliff so Kida can also fall to his demise just like its fellow creatures. Tao tries to rescue him by throwing his spear toward the buffalo but fails as it wasn't enough to subdue the animal who now throws the young hunter off the cliff. A flashback plays and we're back to one week ago where it all started. Well, that's what I call a cliffhanger. Back in the tribe, to join the hunting group, a young tribe member must be able to pass the test which is to make an effective spear blade in a limited amount of time. Kida and his friend Kappa pass the test, making them the new members of their hunting group. After the test, they are beaten up by the hunters and other tribesmen as their initiation, so they are aware that with this responsibility, they must be able to endure pain. Tao cannot bear the look at his son getting beaten up. His wife, Ro, on the other hand, tearfully watches this to prepare herself for the path Kida is about to take. Since he is the chief's son, Kida has the burden to prove himself to the tribe. Later that night, he overhears his mother telling Tao that he might die in this hunting party because he leads with his heart, not his spear, but Tao insists that Kida has a responsibility to their tribe. The day has come and the group says their goodbyes and promises to their families. Ro reluctantly sends off her son and gives him a fur cloth to remember her and to keep him safe. The group finally sets off on their journey through the sacred path left by their ancestors. This path has rock shrines with hand marks pointing them in the direction to reach their hunting ground. Their group comes across another group of hunters led by Tao's friend and both decide to continue their expedition together since there is safety in numbers. During their trip, Tao has given Kida several tests to showcase his survival skills. However, he disappoints his father. As they feast on the boar they caught around the fire, Tao hears something in the woods and orders everyone to get into a defensive position. Thinking he's mistaken, the group drops their guard, which turns out to be a fatal mistake. Well, not to everyone, mostly just Kappa, who is now being devoured by a mountain lion. First hunting trip and he gets chosen by a wild beast. Yikes. Tough luck, kid. The next day, both groups hold a traditional memorial service for Kappa and continue on their journey while mourning the loss of a young hunter. While resting in a cave, Kida gets tattooed with the constellations which Tao believes will guide him back home if ever the time comes that he has made it on his own. Spoiler alert, that time did come, but let's save the rest of the details for later. The following events brings us to the present time where Kida is pushed off the cliff. The group rushes to the cliff edge where they see Kida holding on for his dear life. However, before they can even rescue him, his support collapses, making Kida hit his head and fall into a small ledge. Losing his rationality, Tao tries to jump and reach for the unconscious boy, but another hunter pulls him back to safety and reminds him that they cannot lose him too. While the other hunters are packing up as they think Kida is dead, Tao continues to call desperately his name. However, to no avail, his son remains unconscious the whole time. One of his fellow hunters convinces Tao to let Kida go and set his soul free so, like Kappa, he can peacefully join their ancestors. Upon hearing this, Tao tearfully agrees so they hold a second memorial service for him before leaving his body behind. Imagine going home and your two latest recruits didn't even make it out alive. Good luck in getting new applicants for the next recruitment. <laughs> The day has passed and a flock of vultures swarm around the cliff. Thinking he is a corpse, one lands on Kida and tries to feed on him. Surprised by the sensation of its beak, Kida finally regains consciousness and wrings the vulture's neck and pushes it off the ledge. After realizing his current situation, he calls for his father but no one responds. Since his leg is broken, he cannot climb out of the cliff without plunging to his death. There are also not enough edges for him to climb onto even if he endures the pain. Moments later, a storm arrives and the water beneath him is rising to his level. Kida thinks hard for a very long time and decides to do something he thought he would never do. He bravely jumps into the water and blacks out. For 
Unfortunately, he is alive and safe after that stunt. After waking up, he drinks the water from a puddle and puts it in a makeshift splinter. He slowly limps back to the cliff and sees the burial mound that his father and other hunters have built for him. This upsets him because this would only mean one thing, he was left behind. After all, they think he died from the fall and he needs to return home on his own. While calming himself, Kida suddenly hears an alpha wolf's howl. This alerts him because this means that a pack of wolves are heading his way and being a lone man makes him an easy target. To protect himself and survive the following days as he waits for his leg recovery, he sleeps on a dried out tree at night, drinks water from puddles, and eats worms for sustenance. While having his not so Michelin star worthy meal, a pack of wolves finds him. He runs, no, limps back to the tree. However, one wolf caught him and pulls his injured leg. Since he cannot kick it, he stabs the wolf's leg with a spear blade, immediately immobilizing the wolf. He finally reaches the top of the tree while the other wolves struggle to reach him. The night has come and the alpha decides that he's not worth all this time, so the herd finally goes away, leaving the injured wolf for dead. With his spear, Kida wants to finish off the wolf's life for good, but after hearing it whimper, he couldn't go through with it and leaves it behind. However, Kida couldn't just stand by and watch another creature die miserably. With extreme caution, he approaches the wolf, muzzles its mouth, and carries it near the water so he can clean its wounds. Since they're in constant danger from other animals such as hyenas, he carries it again to seek shelter in a nearby cave. While tending to his wounds, Kida also cares for the wolf by feeding him his share of food and treating its wound, even if it growls whenever Kida comes near him. To Kida, this creature is now his friend. The loneliness from both being alone and vulnerable alleviates when you have a companion, even if it's in the form of a wild beast. Growing tired of worms, Kida makes his first hunt and successfully brings back a rabbit. He also manages to establish his dominance by feeding on the rabbit first and feeding the wolf after he's finished. After they spend more time together, the wolf finally grows to trust him and even approaches him on its own. When his injury and the wolf's wounds finally healed, Kida prepares his things and leaves the wolf behind to embark on the journey back home on his own. However, the wolf who has now grown attached to him refuses to leave his side and continues to follow him despite his flimsy attempts to drive it away. Eventually, he accepts him as once again his companion. The two decide to hunt for their food together. However, they miserably fail on their first try. Here we can see the wolf genuinely confused because of how bad Keda is at hunting, since he's used to a coordinated pack. Well, he chose his owner, and he has to love him for who he is, even if he sucks at getting food on the table. As they continue on their journey, Kida manages to train the wolf to come to him whenever he whistles, and they successfully make their first hunt together as a duo. The wolf even cuddles him at night and wakes him up by licking his face. After every hunt, every night they have fallen asleep together, and after every meal they have shared, their bond grows even stronger. Kida names his newfound friend Alpha. The first snow has finally come. Other than that, Alpha's pack finally finds their missing member. Since Kida knows what it's like to be separated from his family, he lets Alpha go back to them, even if his heart is heavy from losing his only companion. As a habit, Kida whispers while he travels, hoping that Alpha would come back to him. Because of this terrible loneliness and longing for company, he dreams that Tao has finally told Ro that he's dead. He wakes up, and to calm himself, he looks at his tattooed constellation to make sure that he's going on the right path back home. While braving a snowstorm alone, Kida sights a pack of wolves devouring a carcass. When he recognizes Alpha, he immediately rushes in their direction, not realizing that the ground he's running on is a frozen lake. Eventually, the ice beneath him breaks and he falls into the cold water. He drifts farther away from the hole he has fallen into, as the rest of his things, even the fur cloth Ro has given to him, sinks in the lake. Fortunately, he catches his spear and he was able to break the ice. Alpha, who realizes he is in danger, pulls him up from the water. Kida builds a fire, strips his wet clothes, and cuddles Alpha, who left his pack for warmth to get him through the coldest day of his life. After recovering, the two continue on their journey. One day, they find themselves skating on thin ice, no pun intended, when they realize that they are facing two threats to their life. Behind them are a pack of hyenas waiting to devour them, while in front, a terrible snowstorm is about to eat them whole. With Alpha's help, the two are able to find a cave that will save them both. However, inside is another danger waiting for them when a cave lion emerges from the darkness. This beast almost attacks Kida, but Alpha interferes. Seeing that the lion is overpowering his companion, Kida focuses and aims for the bow and arrow he acquired from a man they saw beforehand. With this, he fatally shoots the lion to its death. Alpha, on the other hand, sustained serious injuries, so Kida immediately tends to his wounds as he himself coughs up blood and weakens over time. After gaining back their strength, the two continue on their journey, and Kida is overjoyed to finally see the sacred path. Knowing that he's close to home, he gains more strength to carry. On the contrary, Alpha grows weaker to the point that he can no longer walk. 
Kido doesn't want to leave him behind as he already treats him as part of his tribe, so he carries him, even if he's growing weaker every second of his life. The two pass out in the middle of their journey. Kida dreams of the night when his mother thinks he might die during his expedition. However, Tao assures her that their son is stronger than he knows. He wakes him up and with his remaining strength, he carries Alpha in his arms and continues. Despite his failing health, the terrible snowstorms, and everything that's happened, Kida succeeds when he finally reaches home. The whole tribe watches him in awe because to them, it's a miracle that he's come back and survived the way back home. Both his parents couldn't help but tear up and rejoice that their son returned home. His family brings him and Alpha inside the hut where the shaman looks over them. While he is recuperating, the shaman discovers Alpha's condition as it continues to whimper. It turns out that Alpha is not a he, but a she. That night, Alpha gives birth to a litter of puppies, and the whole tribe welcomes them as a new part of their family. Kida hugs Alpha as she lets him be. Tao couldn't help but be amazed to witness this event that will go down in history, the day dogs became humans' oldest companions. This movie is not for people who are dog lovers. Because, first of all, why? <laughs> How come? What? And second, this will make you finally give in to your instincts to love every dog you'll ever see, as we've been doing even during prehistoric times. Well, if you're allergic, you can love them from afar. You can also enjoy this with your family, especially with your parents who refuse to get you a dog in the house. Please subscribe to our channel to be notified when we upload. And don't forget to suggest movies you want us to recap in the future in the comments down below.